guys, it's Julie Spencer, author of the Bucks and Peak series. We are working our way through Bucks and Peak The Early Years, which is the prequel to my Bucks and Peak trilogy. And um, I hope that if you're liking these videos that you will subscribe to my channel so that you can get any future videos that I get when they come out. And that you will give the videos a thumbs up and like them and share them on social media so that other people can enjoy them as well. Okay. Buxton Peak, The Early Years, Chapter 6, Rock the House. Ian sighed when someone knocked on his dressing room door. Once again, he was interrupted from his writing. It's open, he grumbled. Can I come in? Kai peered around to where Ian was sitting on the chair with his guitar and notepad. Kai's eyes showed remorse. Are you feeling better? The guy said you got stage fright. It wasn't stage fright. Ian strummed the guitar strings. Are you coming down with something? Kai sat on the sofa, leaned forward, and rested his elbows on his knees. Kai, I don't want to talk about this. You know my standards, and instead of respecting them, you sent Janie in here to my dressing room while you... I don't even want to think about what you were doing. Pal, just because I don't agree with your standards doesn't mean we are still best mates. Kai pushed Ian's knee to get him to look at him in the eye. I'm sorry I sent Janie in here. I won't do anything like that again. But I'm not going to apologize for liking Cherie. And your judgmental attitude is wearing on my nerves. Ian could see Kai's point. He had to let Kai make his own choices, even if they were more often mistakes. He had to allow Kai the freedom to choose. He took a deep breath and looked into his eyes. I'm sorry. I'll try to be less judgmental. Still friends? Kai held out a hand to shake. Ian set aside his guitar and hugged his best pal. He wrinkled his nose and pushed Kai away. Gross! You smell like perfume. Get away from me. Kai leaned back on the sofa and put his hands behind his head, crossing one leg over the other. Hey, can you do me a favor? Ian leaned forward and smacked Kai on the knee. Would you lock your door if you're going to do crap like that? I don't ever want to walk in on that again. Ian shuddered. I'll never get that image out of my head. Ugh. Kai leaned his head back and laughed. Sure, I promise to lock my door. Every day if I have the chance. Hey, Ian changed the subject. How about if we start out the show tonight with Welcome to the Jungle? It's the song that got this whole thing started. Mixing up the set on night one? Do you think the guys will go for that? Do they have a choice? Ian grinned. If you start that guitar riff that Slash made famous, they're going to have to go with it. Seriously? You're not going to tell them ahead of time? Sure I will, Ian said with a smirk. The first line of my vocals will ask them if they know where they are, and I'll be looking right at the two of them when I tell them. You're in the jungle, baby. I think they'll get the hint. You rock, Ian Taylor. Kai pushed himself off the sofa and pulled Ian up with him. Come on, let's go make history. Let's rock, Ian answered and followed Kai out of the dressing room. Three hours later, covered in sweat and adrenaline, Ian wrapped his arms around his three best mates' shoulders and they put their heads together in the center of the stage. They could barely catch their breath and were shaking, but the grins on each of their faces spoke volumes. They'd done it. They had played to a nearly sold-out stadium, albeit a small stadium, but a stadium nonetheless. They had played about half the show with original songs from their recently released debut album and half the show with iconic rock hits. Ian wanted to give the guys a congratulatory pep talk, but the stadium was too loud, so he shouted over the screaming fans, Let's rock! Let's rock! They all shouted together. They broke apart and waved to the crowd as they ran off the stage. They were immediately swarmed by people congratulating them, clapping them on the back, giving them high fives, hugging them. All four sets of parents were there. Jeremy and Mr. Hayworth were there, along with Janie and Cherie and a whole host of other girls. Countless people who Ian didn't even know surrounded him. He might have felt claustrophobic if he weren't riding such a high on adrenaline. He'd never felt so good in his life. He didn't even feel tired, even though he'd been up and down and all over the elaborate stage. Because he wasn't hindered by an instrument, he could run anywhere he wanted and interact with the crowds from every angle. Where did that come from? 
Jeremy pulled him aside and almost yelled so Ian could hear him. Where did you come from? Buxton, baby, that's where I came from. Jeremy picked Ian off the floor in a giant hug and spun him around. You're going to make us all rich, do you know that? I don't care about getting rich, Ian called back to him. I just want to rock. Oh, you rocked all right. You rocked this house. Jeremy looked him in the eye in mock seriousness. You might want to get your arm warmed up because you're going to be signing autographs for the next decade. A lot longer than that, Kai yelled from beside them. You were like a rock god out there. You don't even believe in God. Ian laughed and shoved his friend playfully. I believe in you, Kai pushed him back. Gary and Andy joined them and the four guys jumped around as if they were in their own personal mosh pit. Eventually, they had to let the rest of the world into their circle and hug their mums and dads. Even Janie came around to give Ian a hug, as if the tension from earlier had never happened. He was far more responsive to her this time. Something about the adrenaline racing through him made Ian wonder if the scenario would have ended differently if she had come on to him after the show rather than before. He turned away from the crowd and made sure his parents weren't looking before kissing Janie way more passionately than he should have. You forgive me? Janie laughed up at him. Yeah, just don't do that again, okay? He thought to himself, I may not want to say no next time. I promise. She seemed happy enough just to have been forgiven. I'm busy for the rest of the night, Ian said, but I'll see you at school on Monday. Okay. She reached up on her toes to give him a compliment. You were amazing tonight. He kissed her one more time, hoping his parents didn't see, but forgetting to check first. Ian turned away from Janie to see his dad with his arms folded and a scolding look on his face. Ian shrugged his shoulders and they both broke into a grin. Ian sheepishly walked over to his dad and he gave Ian a noogie. Ian wrapped his arms around his dad who leaned down to speak to only Ian. You might want to wipe the lipstick off your face before you go hug your mom. As if reading his mind, Jeremy tossed Ian a towel and he scrubbed his face. Better? Oh yeah, Kai grinned. A hundred percent better. Not, Gary called. Ian scrubbed his face again but cringed when he heard his mom's voice behind him. He squared his shoulders and faced her. Hey, love, you might want to ask your girlfriend to stop wearing so much lipstick. Ian's mom stood there with her hands on her hips. Seeing as how we now know you have a girlfriend, you might want to introduce us to her. You're not mad, are you? Ian asked, still, still scrubbing at his face. It was just a kiss, I promise. You really blew us away out there, Claire said. I had no idea you could perform like that. I'm pretty sure I didn't either. Ian laughed and threw his arms around his mom. Thanks for supporting me all these years. You're the best mom in the whole world. Well, you keep remembering that because I have a feeling you're going to be seeing a whole lot of the world very soon. Do you really think so? Ian pulled back and looked into his mom's eyes. After what I saw tonight, I know it. Ian's mom scrunched up her face. I'd love to give you a congratulatory kiss right now, but that is really not my color. Is it still that bad? Ian asked. Get me to my dressing room so I can wash up. This way, Ian. Jeremy led him in the direction of the dressing room. As they walked, Jeremy gave Ian the good news. Your songs are climbing the charts on downloads. Spotify, Amazon, iTunes, CDs. Tracks are flying off the virtual shelves. That is so cool. Ian felt as if he was flying off the virtual shelves. He felt like jumping off the stadium roof to test his flying abilities. What am I supposed to do now? Enjoy the high, kiddo. You earned it. Is there some place I'm supposed to go to sign autographs or something? Everywhere you walk, from now until the time you get into the limo, people will be asking for your autograph. Limo? Ian faced his manager. You've got to be kidding me. Might as well get used to it, buddy. You're a rock star now. Jeremy shoved Ian into his dressing room and closed the door, leaving Ian with a moment to himself. Ian walked straight over to the mirror and shook his head. I look like a sweaty, disgusting mess. He used the soap in the bathroom to wash his face as best he could, but he had no idea where he could find a shower in this stadium. He'd have to remember that in the next show. Mental note, make sure my dressing room is near a shower. One more quick item of business. 
He knew he didn't have much time before he'd be engulfed in the crowds, but he knelt on his knees right there in the middle of the floor in his dressing room. Thank you, Father, for my talents and abilities and family and friends and fans and the air that I breathe and the opportunity I have to rock. Help me to stay pure and strong so you'll be proud of me. He closed his eyes and bounced back off his knees. Excuse me, he closed his prayer and bounced back off his knees. Ian practically sprinted to the door to rejoin the people who were supporting him. He felt as if he could take on the world. Uh, high school's going to be a bit of a problem, Jeremy called the following day. It seems that there are a lot of girls camped out in the parking lot waiting to meet you tomorrow morning. What am I supposed to do? Ian felt a mixture of panic in the pit of his stomach and euphoria at the idea of adoring fans waiting to meet him. I'm going to need to arrange a few things, but I think I have a plan, Jeremy said. You usually arrive really early for school, right? Yeah. Think you can get the other guys to come with you if we pick them up in a limo and you all come early before school starts? Probably. Ian was starting to see Jeremy's plan. I'll arrive about a half hour before and tell the girls they each have about 30 seconds to get an autograph, maybe take a quick selfie with the four of you, and then they'll need to vacate the premises. That sounds like a good plan, Ian says. It could work. You call the other guys, and I'll make the arrangements for the limo to pick you up. All right, I can do that. Ian said his goodbyes to Jeremy, and then he dialed Kai's number to explain the situation. All four guys agreed to come, and the plan worked just as it was orchestrated. For about two minutes. Girls were everywhere. The guys of Buxton Peak could barely get out of the car. Ian felt almost violated by the way girls grabbed onto him from all sides. Some were crying, some were shaking or calling out lewd comments. They, were ha they had handmade signs and t-shirts painted to look like Buxton Peak's logo or lyrics from their songs or the girls' names paired with the guys' names with giant hearts drawn around them. It was crazy. Girls from school who had never paid Ian the time of day prior to him becoming famous treated him as if they were his best friends. Most of the girls he'd never seen before, and some even spoke French or Dutch. Where'd all these girls come from? Andy called out. Apparently across the channel, Gary said. The guys posed for countless photos and tried to sign autographs as fast as they could. Whatever girls held out. CD covers, journals, notebooks, t-shirts, arms, jeans. One girl even exposed most of her chest and asked Ian to sign there. He pushed her away and signed her shoulder. Kai was a little more accommodating to her request. Within a few minutes, head teacher Wallace rushed into the parking lot with several other large teachers, acting as makeshift security detail, shooing the girls out of the parking lot. Once he herded the boys into the building and slammed the doors, his booming voice echoed through the deafening silence. This is a school, not a location for a publicity stunt. Publicity stunt? Ian asked. This is our life now. This is our reality. We're going to have to make it work. It won't amount to a thing, Mr. Wallace sneered. You're a flash in the pan, just like every other one-hit wonder band. What? Ian took a step forward. Gary and Andy each grabbed one of Ian's arms and pulled him back. I don't know what your plans are long term, Mr. Wallace leaned forward and creased his eyebrows, but your little antics are disrupting my school. You're going to need to figure out some other option for your education. You're going to regret this, Ian yelled as Andy and Gary pushed him down the hall and away from Mr. Wallace. We are already famous and we'll continue to be famous and all you'll ever be is the head teacher who kicked us out of school for being too famous. I'm out of here. Sorry, Mr. Wallace, Kai said. Ian heard most of what Kai said afterward, but not all. Ian's not thinking straight. He'll be back. He loves this school. I'll go get him. Eventually, Kai caught up with Ian and pulled his shoulder around to look him in the eye. What do you want, Kai? I quit. No, you didn't. You know you can't leave the music studio, and the band room, and Mr. Hayworth, and Janie. Kai raised his eyebrows. Yeah, right, Ian said. Like that's going to last. There's no way she's going to wait around for me once we start touring. 
You got a point. Sherry and I were never really exclusive anyway. I don't think she sees it quite that way, Ian pointed out. Whatever, Kai mumbled. Mr. Wallace is right, though, Kai. Ian looked down at the floor and shook his head. School is going to be a problem. We're going to need to come up with a better solution. We'll get Jeremy's advice, Andy said. We're not the first teenagers to become famous, you know. Ian ignored him and started walking down the hall. You know what Mr. Wallace is not right about? Kai caught up with him. We are not a one-hit wonder. We are rock stars. Period. End of story. No, beginning of story. The corners of Ian's mouth turned up. You always know how to make me feel better, don't you? That's because I'm your best pal. Kai bumped Ian's shoulder as they continued walking. They bypassed their regularly scheduled mathematics classroom and headed straight for their favorite place, the band room, where they could lose themselves in the one thing that mattered most to them. Okay, and that is the end of the chapter. And hope that you're liking the video so far and that you will... Give them a thumbs up and like the videos and subscribe to my channel and share the videos on social media so that others can enjoy them as well. We'll see you for the next chapter.